Hi, I'm Bob Moore with Alpha Software. In this third and final video on configuring and using push whoosh and push notifications with PhoneGap Build and Alpha Anywhere, we're going to build a PhoneGap shell app that can use push notifications. And then next, we'll dig into the component template to configure the component with the required Google and push whoosh credentials. I'm going to build a PhoneGap shell that will be configured for use with the app ID I've used for my APNS certificate and PushWish credentials. The PhoneGap shell will also include the PhoneGap PushWish plugin, as well as any other plugins that I might be using in any of my test components that I wish to load and test within the PhoneGap shell. This is a fast way to deal with the iterative process of testing and developing a PhoneGap component because you don't have to constantly rebuild the native iOS and Android PhoneGap app. You just publish the app to your development server and then load it dynamically into the PhoneGap shell. First, we'll build the PhoneGap shell. From the Web Projects Control Panel, click Create UX Component from a Template and select the PhoneGap shell template. You don't need to modify the component at all. Just save it and name it. I've named mine PhoneGap shell. Now let's build the PhoneGap shell app. First, verify the IP address of your development machine because all of the devices will be making callbacks to the development server. From within the PhoneGap app builder, open the URL for all Ajax callbacks window and click the show IP addresses from my machine. If your build does not show this link, you can get the IP address for your machine easily by opening a command shell and entering the command IP config, then hit carriage return. Make sure to add the HTTP colon slash slash prefix. And if you are using a port other than port 80, make sure to enter this as a suffix as well. In my case, I'm using port 81. Next, you need to make sure the application ID exactly matches the app ID you used for your push notifications and developer certificate. In my case, I used com.alphasoftware.testshell. Enter your application name and description. I'm using PhoneGap version CLI 5.2.0 for this app. While this is not the latest release, I know from experience that it's very stable and that it will work well with all the plugins I need. You'll notice that the PhoneGap shell template has enabled all of the Android features and is installing a lot of plugins. The reason for this is because this is a test shell that will load the alpha components code dynamically. This is for rapid development and testing only. It's not designed for deployment. I've tried to anticipate all of the plugins that I might need in this shell app for all of the components that I may, may be testing. If at some point in the future I need a plugin for a new component that is not already installed with this shell, I'll need to add it to the shell and rebuild the shell app. The PushWish component template requires the PushWish plugin as well as the device, status bar, toast, and notifications plugins, so make sure they are all checked from within the builder for our shell. Do not include the geolocation plugin because it interferes with the get accurate position method that we'll be calling when reverse geocoding an address. We're handling geolocation through supported HTML5 calls. Next, click the Save and Upload to PhoneGap Build button. Since we are using the PushWish plugin, a window appears asking if we wish to include support for geozones or beacons. In this case, select Yes if you want to set up and test geozones on PushWish. The component includes support for this. You can learn all about geozones on the PushWish website. This creates the PhoneGap application zip file and uploads it to PhoneGap Build. If you unlock the key on PhoneGap Build that is required for using push notifications with this app, then the iOS app that will be generated should be all set. If you aren't sure, you can go to build.phonegap.com and look at the iOS build log. To do this, from your apps page at build.phonegap.com, click on the app title. Next, click on the iOS log button and scroll to the bottom of the page. Look for the signing identity and the provisioning profile. These need to match the provisioning profile you created for this app with push notifications. If they are not correct, select the correct key 
from the iOS build dropdown and click the rebuild button. You can install the test shell on your device by scanning in the QR code from either the PhoneGap build site or from within the Alpha PhoneGap app builder. Next, we'll configure the PushWish component template for use with your credentials and dynamically load the component into this PhoneGap shell app. Next, from the Web Projects control panel, create a new UX component from the component template labeled PhoneGap, secure login with location tracking and PushWish notifications. This component has integrated security functionality enabled upon successful login the panel application panel card will transition into view. Save the component with a name that's easy for you to remember and key in to the PhoneGap shell. I'm going to skip this step because I've already got a working component. To test the finished component, you'll need to make sure that the alpha security framework is enabled for your development server. Next, you'll need to set up the security framework with a few users that are allowed access. Here I've set up three users and three groups. We'll be sending push notifications to rem at me.com, who is the only member of the administration group. Next, set the component security to always allow so that all users can use this component to log in. Once a user logs in, we will store the username within the custom tag username that we've already defined on the PushWish server. This equates a specific user with a specific device. Close the component security window and publish the security files as well as the data tables. If you have any questions on the Alpha security framework, see the Alpha help text and documentation for further information. Close out the web security window and let's get back to the component configuration. Open the JavaScript functions. You need to make some changes to include your Google and PushWish credentials. From within the init PushWish function, enter your Google app ID and your PushWish app ID. Next, click on XBasic functions. These are your server side functions, so it's important to remember to publish this component to your development server before trying to use this component within the PhoneGap shell. This is a step that a lot of developers forget. Remember, the PhoneGap shell makes an AJAX call to load this component into the native shell and that the component itself makes a callback to its server-side code, which is defined here. From within the send admin notification function, enter your PushWish app ID and your PushWish API access token. You can copy and paste these from the PushWish app control panel. Next, from the reverse geocode and send admin notification function, enter your Google geocode API key. At this point, the component is properly configured tasked within the PhoneGap app shell. To publish the component to your development server, you can right click on the component name and select publish. In my case, I'm publishing to the local web root folder. If you are using a project folder that's defined in your publishing profile, make sure that your PhoneGap shell is set up to look for that folder. That would be specified within the PhoneGap app builder callback URL. To verify that everything is working correctly, you can now load the component into the PhoneGap shell. I'll test this out on my iPhone. Launch the PhoneGap shell and add the name of your component. In my case, I've already added my component. Secure location check-in with PushWish. Next, tap on the component name. At this point, a callback is made from the shell app to your development server and the component is loaded. It's important to have your iPhone on the same wireless network as your development server. If the component does not load, you can plug in the USB cable that came with your device and launch a debugger from either Safari, assuming you are running OS X with an iPhone or an iPad, or the Chrome debugger if you are running on a PC with any of the Android devices. You'll be able to see all of the activity within the PhoneGap shell, including any callbacks that fail. In my case, everything is working properly. I can log in and check in or check out of a location, and the push notifications are working as planned. Next, let's go back to the component and take a look at some of the code to get a better understanding of what is going on. From the Web Projects Control Panel, double-click on the component. 
We'll start off by taking a look at some of the important client side events. Let's look at the uninitialized complete. Here I'm defining a JavaScript global object called this app. And I'm creating some properties that are really pointers to DOM objects that I know I'm going to be working with. This allows me to do one lookup for each of these objects rather than doing these lookups every time I need to set one of their attributes. This technique is much more efficient than doing consistent DOM lookups. Next, I set up the state of the check-in flag that I'll be using to track whether a user is checking in or checking out of a location. In the on render complete event and on the on orientation change events, I'm calling the resize map container JavaScript function. This adjusts the map container to fit nicely within the panel card on any device. If you've got a keen eye, you'll notice that I'm doing a DOM lookup in the resize map container function, which I just suggested isn't the most efficient way to alter an attribute. I had to do this here because a number of events fire before the uninitialized complete method is called, so it's a matter of timing. I could have probably come up with another way of optimizing this, but there are times where it's good enough, and this is one of those times because this function doesn't get called very often. Next, we'll look at the on phone gap ready event. Here we are calling the status bar plugin to adjust the panel to accommodate the iOS status bar because I don't want it to overlay the panel card. Next, I call the JavaScript function init pushwush. This uses the pushwush plugin to initialize pushwush notifications. It's well documented and worth going through. Everything that's going on here is documented on the pushwush plugin doc. I've enabled location tracking within this function to allow the app to respond to pushwush geozones. These are well documented on the pushwush site. Basically, when the device enters a defined geozone, a push notification can be sent to it. Next, let's take a look at the server side events. Here in the on login event, which fires when the user tries to log in, upon a successful login, I'm calling a server side function called send admin notification to send an admin user a push notification indicating that this user just logged in. You'll notice that I'm also calling a JavaScript function called set user name tag, and that sets the custom user name tag on the pushwush server. This equates the device to the logged in user. I'm also saving the username to a state info property because I'm going to need this username server side when the user checks in or checks out of a location. Some developers are in the habit of using session variables to pass data around like this, but that's not a good idea with a mobile app. The state info properties are passed in all of the AJAX callbacks, so they are always available both server and client side. From here, we are calling the push notification objects set tags method and setting the username tag on the pushwish server to the logged in username. In the server side on logout event, I'm doing something similar, sending the admin user a notification that this user just logged out. However, I'm also clearing the username tag. This will remove the username tag from the pushwish server so that this user is no longer associated with this device. You would probably only want to do this if you had multiple users sharing a device. This tag is cleared in the clear username tag JavaScript function. This function also clears the state info username property. Next, we'll look at the check in and check out buttons. From controls, click on the check in button in the panel card called panel application. The on click event is calling the JavaScript check in function. You'll notice that it's rare for me to include a bunch of JavaScript code within the event handlers. I prefer to simply call a JavaScript function that I'll define in JavaScript functions. This is more efficient and it helps to centralize my code. It's all primarily in one place, not defined in line with some click event that could get scattered all over the DOM. Let's look at the check in function. You'll notice it's very similar to the checkout function, which is called by the click event on the checkout button. All I'm doing is setting the state of the check-in flag and then calling log location. The log location function displays a wait message 
and calls the asynchronous navigator.geolocation.get accurate position function. This function is part of the alpha JavaScript library that is loaded with the component. We wrote this function to get the accurate location of the device. This was required because the standard geolocation function can be very inaccurate, sometimes using cached location information. Once we successfully get the location, the geosuccess function is called and a marker is placed on the map. Next, an AJAX callback is made to the reverse geocode and send notification function, which is defined in our XBASIC functions. I'm passing the server the location and the state of the check-in flag. From the XBASIC functions, let's take a look at the reverse geocode and send admin notifications function. You'll notice I'm using a variable called this user that I'm setting from the state variable that we set client side when the user logged in. Next, I'm making a call to the Google Geocoding API to reverse geocode the latitude and the longitude that we've acquired from the device. Then, finally, I'm calling the server side send admin notification with the appropriate message and location. I'm also sending back the JavaScript required to inform the user that they have just checked in or checked out of a given address. That's all handled in the AJAX.js variable. Well, we've covered a lot of ground with this component. There's obviously a lot going on here. We're handling user authentication, device push notifications, location logging, and reverse geocoding within this component. So it's complicated by its requirements. In a production app, you'd most likely log all the information to a back-end database, which is fairly simple to do with Alpha. Thanks for your attention going through all of this, and best of luck in working with your newfound knowledge on using push notifications within an Alpha Anywhere component. Thanks.